Number four, suppose a car travels 108 kilometers at a speed of 30 meters per second and uses two gallons of gasoline. Only 30% of the gasoline goes into useful work by the force that keeps the car moving at constant speed despite friction. So see table 7.1. I got that value guys over here on the left hand side. Letter A, what is the magnitude of the force exerted to keep the car moving at constant speed? All right, so here's the setup. Car is moving at this velocity and it has to travel 108 kilometers, all right? Or not that it has to, but it is traveling 108 kilometers and over that 108 kilometers, it is consuming uh, 2.0 gallons, right? Gallons of gas, okay? Now, first thing I notice is, um, well, actually probably won't even matter. Uh, usually I would just go right away to convert this value kilometers uh, into meters, but it might not be necessary here. So let's just hold off for that. So first thing is first. So it wants to know the magnitude of the force exerted to keep the car moving, right, at, the, at a constant speed. So it might seem a little tricky on how to relate these quantities together, uh, but uh, let's consider this formula over here on the right-hand side. Work is equal to the force, right? Work is equal to the force applied multiplied by the distance that object is move, moving and multiplied by then the cosine of the angle between the vectors of force and distance. Now both the force and the distance in this problem, right, are basically lined up, right? The force is going to be applied uh, to the right and the distance the car is traveling is also, also to the right. So now I need to somehow figure out force, right? It wants to know the magnitude of the force. So if I'm considering this formula, right, in order to know uh, this variable, I better know this variable and this variable and this variable. Although I just talked about this, right? It's zero. So really, I know the question is asking me, what's the magnitude of the force? But now I change the question in my mind, right? I'm thinking, well, what's the work that was done? And what's the distance that it traveled? All right. So actually, now we will have to do this conversion. All right. So that's the first thing that popped into my head. I know I'm going to have to find the distance it traveled. So, well, I got to convert this to meters. So simply just move the decimal three places to the right, right? Or you can simply multiply it by 100. So 108,000 meters, okay? So look at that, I already found the distance, okay? So now, that was simple, I just gotta find the work. So how can I find the work done? Remember, work is in terms of joules. Uh, how can I find the work done on the car? Well, they told us it uses two gallons of gasoline, right? It uses two gallons of gasoline, and every one gallon right, produces 1.2 times 10 to the 8 joules, and only 30% of that gasoline goes into useful work. Hmm, I think we can see how to piece this together, right? So why don't we start here? Let's start with, uh, so, so we got two gallons of gasoline, right? And I'm going to take this and multiply it by uh, this, I'll call it a conversion factor, right? For every one gallon, it produces 1.2 times 10 to the 8 joules of, of energy or of work, okay? Of possible work, let's say. So notice the gallons cancel and this would leave me with joules. But remember, the car doesn't use all 100%, all 100% of that energy. It will only use 30% of that energy to do useful work. So that means that I then have to take this value and multiply it by 0.3, okay? AKA 30%. And when I do that, that will give me now the work, right? It, it, essentially the energy extracted uh, from the gasoline by the engine, right? That is enabling uh, the car to propel itself forward. Okay, so it's 1.2 times 10 to the eight multiplied by 0.3. So we get a value here of 3.6 times, I think this is gonna be to the seven. Let's just double check, three, six, seven, yes times 10 to the seven, and that is in joules. Okay, so this is the uh, useful work being done, all right? So now I just solved for this variable. And guess what? All we gotta do is plug it all in to find my force now, right? So the work that's done by the gas essentially is 3.6 times 10 to the seven. The force, I don't know, that's what I'm looking for. The distance the car traveled was 100, and 8,000 meters, and it was the, right, the angle between them, let me just plug in a zero there, right? So this just goes to one, 
And then I just have to divide out the 108,000 from both sides. Great, so that cancels. So the force now would be, let's see, divide that by 108, oh, oh, oh. and it works out to about 30, 333, right? 333 new, uh, newtons, okay? That would be the value um, of the force. All right, so that takes care of letter A. Not bad at all. Let's now take a look at letter B, okay? So it says, if the required force, all right, is directly proportional to speed, how many gallons will be used to drive 108 kilometers at a speed of 28 meters per second? Okay, so what they're saying is that, um, right, force is proportional to speed, okay? And what we're trying to do is we're trying to find uh, how many gallons would be consumed now uh, if we're only going to drive 28 meters per second. So let's frame it this way. Remember that two gallons, 2.0 gallons, get you to travel at 30 meters per second. And now we want to travel at 28 meters per second. And we're trying to figure out how many gallons that would require. And remember, they just told us that this all was directly proportional to one another. So I can set up a proportion, right? Just be consistent. So let's put, um, let's, let's, it doesn't really matter how you set this up. You just got to be consistent. So let's put all the gallons on the left-hand side of my proportion. So it's 2.0 gallons over X will equal then, let's put all of the um, speeds right on the right-hand side. Now just be careful. This speed in the numerator must correlate to this gallon consumed in the numerator on the left. That's what I mean by consistency here. If it's not, right, if you were to put the 30 in the bottom, totally wrong. Problem's wrong now, okay? You got to be consistent. So the 30 goes on the top because this speed correlates with this number of gallons consumed. And 28 will go on the bottom because this value, 28 meters per second, correlates with the amount of gallons that we're trying to find down here. So guess what? Just solve for x. Cross multiply here. All right, so this is for letter B. So B, right, 30x is equal to, right, uh, 2 times 28. So what do we get there? Should be 56. And then simply divide out the 30. Okay, so we get now x, x being equal to, hold on one second. So 56 over 30. And it comes out to about 1.87, right? So we got 1.87, 1.87 or 1.9. Um, if I'm just I'm just looking back and seeing the sig figs, so it probably should be about 1.9. Um, and what were the units? Gallons. Okay. And that will be the answer uh, for letter B. Okay. And then I'm just looking back in terms of the force. Yeah, I probably should have done two significant figures over here, but. But honestly, who cares about significant figures anymore? Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. Look forward to helping you out with the next question. Take care.